Today we're going to look at factoring by difference of squares. Now to do that, I'm first going to quickly recall expanding and simplifying. If I have two binomials, x plus 4 times x minus 4, see the pattern there, x plus 4, x minus 4, I'm going to use the FOIL rule to expand those. If you're unfamiliar with the FOIL rule, you can check back at one of my previous tutorials to give you a quick lesson. FOIL rule states, first, outside, inside, last. So my first two terms, if I multiply those, I have x times x gives me x squared. The O in FOIL stands for outside, so that'll be x times negative 4 is negative 4x. The I in FOIL stands for inside, so I have 4 times x. And the L in FOIL stands for last, so I have 4 times negative 4. I'm going to simplify these by collecting the like terms, and I'm going to end up with x squared, negative 4x plus 4x. Those two are going to cancel out, so I'm just left with this negative 16. So x plus 4 times x minus 4 gives us x squared minus 16. Let's look at the next one. Again, we're going to see that pattern. 3m plus 1 times 3m minus 1. So 3m plus 1 times 3m minus 1. Let's see what we get here. F stands for first, so we have 3m times 3m is 9m squared. O is the outside. 3m times negative 1 gives us negative 3m. I stands for inside, so we have the 1 times 3m. And L stands for last, 1 times negative 1. I'm going to simplify by collecting those two middle terms in the middle. 9m squared. Negative 3m plus 3m, those two cancel out, and I'm left with negative 1. Last one, 2g minus 7, 2g plus 7. F stands for first, 2g times 2g, 4g squared. O stands for outside, so I have 2G times 7. I stands for inside, negative 7 times 2G. And L stands for last, negative 7 times positive 7. I'm going to simplify by collecting the middle terms. 4G squared. plus 14g minus 14g, well those two cancel out and I'm with, left with negative 49. Okay, so I want you to recognize this pattern. x plus 4, x minus 4. Our answer is the square of the first term, so x squared, and the square of the second term, 4 squared is 16. And always a subtraction sign in between. 3m plus 1, 3m minus 1. Square of the first term gives us 9m squared. Square of the second term, 1 squared is 1. And always a subtraction sign in between. 2g minus 7, 2g plus 7. Let's square that first term, gives us 4g squared. Square that second term gives us 49, and always a subtraction sign in between. This is going to help us when we go to factor these difference of squares back into two binomials. Example 1, factor fully. x squared minus 9. First thing you're going to check for to see if you can use that difference of squares is make sure this is a square. So I know the square root of x squared is just x. Can I find the square root of 9? Well, that's just 3. And is there a minus sign in between? Well, yes there is. So we can do this. The pattern was x plus 3. x minus 3. So remember from the previous page, square the first term, 
we get our x squared. Square the second term, we get our 9, and a subtraction sign in between. Let's look at the next one. 4a squared minus 25. Well, can we take the square root of 4a squared? 2 times 2 is 4. a times a is a. So the square root of 4a squared is 2a. Can we take the square root of 25? Well, I know that is 5. Is there a subtraction sign in between? Yes, there is. So we can do our pattern. 4a squared minus 25 is going to equal 2a plus 5, 2a minus 5. Let's look at our last one, 36 minus g to the 4. Can I take the square root of 36? Yes, that is 6. Can I take the square root of g to the 4? Yeah, that is g squared. Is there a subtraction sign in between? Yes, there is. So the pattern is square root of 36 plus the square root of g4 times the square root of 36 minus the square root of g to the 4. Which of the following are difference of squares? Remember what we're looking for. First of all, we need a subtraction sign in between there. So this one is definitely out. That one has a plus. Okay, out of the remaining three, we need to be able to take the square root of the first term and also the square root of the second term. So I can take the square root of this. This would be 4x. Square root of 81 is 9. So this one definitely is. Can I take the square root of 5? Well, not very easily, so we're going to cancel that one out. Can I take the square root of 4m squared? Well, that would be 2m. And can I take the square root of 1? Yes, that's just 1. So these two are difference of squares. Two more examples. 32p squared minus 50. Right away, I, can't, I can see I can't take the square root of 32 or 50. But here's what I can do. I can common factor this first and find out what I have left over. So 32p squared minus 50. What goes into both of those? Well, I know 2 goes into both of those, so let's try taking a 2 out. If I divide both of those by 2, I'm left with 16p squared. If I divide 50 by 2, I'm left with 25. Now I want to check to see if this is a difference of squares. Well, I have a subtraction sign, so I'm good there. Can I take the square root of 16p squared? Well, that would be 4p, so yes. And can I take the square root of 25? That would be 5. So, since this is a difference of squares, I can use my pattern. I'm going to take the square root of the first one, plus the square root of the second term, and then I'm going to take the square root of the first term minus the square root of the second term. And there's my answer. Let's try it with this one. Can I take the square root of 16x to the fourth? Yeah, that would be 4x squared. Can I take the square root of 81? Well, that would be 9. So 4x squared plus 9, 4x squared minus 9. And there you have it, factoring by difference of squares.